It is BYU Basketball Media Day. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It is our absolute and distinct pleasure to welcome in the head coach of BYU Basketball as he takes on his third season now. Mark Pope is with us. Coach, great to have you with us. Tell me you made a top 10 list of reasons why Leanne should marry you to sell her on the deal. No, no, but I did. (laughs) So even better, even better, okay? I wrote a song. I recorded it. (laughs) It will be put out at some point when <laughs> she's really upset with me. She's but I recorded it, put it on a. They used to have these things called CDs before you guys were born. Record on a Get CD, send it to her. Deal done. Case closed. It was over. Well done. Serious? Well yeah, done. We don't ever talk. We'll play about it on part two of the podcast. No, you know what we recorded no, no. was part one. Well, that's gonna like people are gonna have to pay for that. That's some. Big That's time exclusive content. Hardcore <laughs> stuff right there. Now, okay, wait, before we start. Yes. Listen. I'm so grateful for you guys. Oh, thank you. It's media day today. Yes. Can you believe I it? I love it. We We're can. ready, it's man. It's media day. We're excited. So, before we go out, I got to hand you guys these oh. to commemorate oh, thank an you. epic last season. Thank you. Oh, Coffee wow. table nice. books. Oh, Unbelievable. Wow. You guys are such a huge part of this oh, program. Thank you. And BYU Athletics, and we're super no. grateful. Now, I've seen these. I've always wanted one. It's got pictures and highlight, amazing photos from Jaron Wilkie and the gang from BYU Photo. It's Koto. incredible. Ah. Oh. Only oh. thing missing is fans in the stands, but we're changing that this year. Cannot yeah. wait. Thank you, sir. This is thank you. Has some heft yes. to it. Yes, sincerely, thank you. This is fantastic. A weighty. Well, a weighty so season. grateful for you guys. Thank and you. We had to do that today Very because kind. we got to turn the page, <laughs> and we got to literally forward. turn the page. Yeah, I like that. Are you guys okay if I commandeer the question of the day? Please, Absolutely. He has Please been do. all summer. It hasn't been recruiting. It hasn't been game plans. It's been nothing. This is the question on the table. We're getting fans back in the stands. Mm. So, we've been debating on the staff, do we go back to the suit or do we stay with the Oh. Pole? I mean, we have been, we've had some drag out fights in the war room. Really? Among the staff. So, I am turning to you, Cougar Nation. Right here, right, one, right here. <laughs> I need your input. Are we going suit or are we going polos? Or three quarter zips. Okay, send it out. We're doing, we're doing a we're doing it. poll question. Let's do I a need poll to question. Know. I need to know. We got to settle this okay. right now. Well, just looking at you in the suit, like I'm a suit guy. I, I love suits. Where do you lean on this question? Here's the thing. I don't want to shade the results. Okay. Because okay? so oh, I have okay. a very strong opinion on this, but I'm not going there. I want to see what the Cougar Nation faithful feel. Okay, we're going to put it out for BYU Sports Nation. We'll have people vote. We'll let you know. At the end of the show. Okay. Can I? So I walked in here. I was sitting in the chairs over here, and I'm looking back here. What is the significance of this train whistle? That is the Rob Morris freight train whistle. The so freight train. In, Rob in Morris, like freight football player. In like 98, 99, his nickname I'm gonna was get it. the freight train. Yeah. So BYU Marketing, we just played yeah. the sound. Um, they, they got this whistle, and they gave it to all the fans. So anytime he like made a tackle or anything, doot, doot. So I'm not going to lie to you. I'm sitting there waiting there. waiting to come on, and yeah. I see this whistle, and I it took every – Part of self impulse control that I have, which you don't have a ton. not to start go blowing on that thing because it's media <laughs> day. We're getting started. Let's go. First I love round, it. Hype first train. Round, first round pick. Hype train's Morris. rolling. Yeah. You know, glad you asked about that. You know, uh, so Leanne worked for David Letterman for a long time. Yes. Yep. And so she always said she's always like Dave loved the guests that came on the show with something. So that's oh, my goal. Me, Every I time I come on this, I want to come on the show with <laughs> something for you guys. We're okay with that. But that's all I got. That was my whole deal. That was all right, the whole deal. It's up to you guys now. Bring it. Mark, it was great to have you on the program. <laughs> <laughs> you must be doing a press conference today because you went suit. Yes. We have a dress code here of no suit. Yes, so but we're doing. We have an exception for you. Well, for coming on here is super important to me. So we're going suit. And then we're doing media day uh, for the next couple hours in Studio A, which we're su- super excited about. And let's go. Okay. So you commandeered the question of the day. Rightly so. Fantastic suits or polos for the coaches. We need or to know. Three quarters zips. Or need three quarters zips. Help. Okay. So we will we will put that out and give you the results as soon as we have them. Uh, I do want to ask you about the level of expectations. We're media guys. This is the stuff that we do. We have our questions of the day. Of course, you have, and you said it before. You've got dreams that most people are scared to even hold near and dear in their minds. So, having made the NCAA tournament as a six seed and lost to UCLA. Where do your expectations lie 
getting to the postseason and potentially advancing? Yeah, so uh, we need to win, and we need to win a lot of games. We need to win in a big fashion. I hope expectations are through the roof. I mean, that's what you fight for as a college athlete. I mean, I feel so bad for the programs where there's no expectations. You kind of wonder what you're doing. So uh, we welcome them. I hope Cougar Nation goes crazy uh, and, and, and just blows it up in terms of expectations because that's what we're chasing. We have a good team. We have guys that are really committed to each other. We have some depth. We can talk about all that in detail. But uh, this crew, uh, the reason they came here and they came back here was because they have big expectations. So we're sharing those big expectations, and we're excited to go see what we can do. Let's go. Oh. Okay, 38 and Ken Palm and Alex Barcelo's back, and you've added some transfers and some newcomers. So how do you feel about this group so far, especially since we saw you practice a couple of weeks ago, and that was a ton of fun? Yeah, guys are working hard. Um, you know, the, you talk about the Ken Palm, so it's Gonzaga at one again. Mm. And then it's <laughs> San Francisco, I think, 37. 34. 34. BYU, 38. Eight. Eight. St. Mary's still 39. Ooh, we'll, we'll check. I think we got four in the top 40. At least, you know, camp Palm changes 42. every single day. So 42, four in the top 42. Which we're so excited about. And that's not even taking into account, for example, Loyola Marymount, which might be a top three team in our league this year. Uh, the league is stacked. Santa Clara is going to be great. I'm expecting them to have a breakout season. It's interesting because last year they never got to play in their own – practice in their Wild. own gym. They were living in a hotel. It was crazy. They still um, won games. I don't know what's going on in Santa Clara, wh wherever that is. But but anyway, tough, right? Really tough. So um, the league's good. It's going to be so fun. All right. Mark Pope is with us on BYU Basketball Media Day. Let's talk about your roster. And I said before as you were walking in, you've got a lot of guys that want to play and are yep. ultra competitive. And it's a challenge every year to, like, narrow down that rotation. Where do you stand in that? Like, how big is the rotation right now, and what do you want it to be when the season really gets going? Rotation is is 15 right now because two guys are injured. So we're at 15. We'll see how it whittles down. I don't know if I can play all 15 guys for <laughs> substantial minutes every game, um, but but we, we got an unbelievable roster. We're super blessed. I mean, you have a, a team that's led by Alex Barcelo and Tijon Lucas, two veteran, veteran guys who've logged huge minutes in huge games and performed at the highest level. And that just gives you a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of confidence and, and feeling of safety there that those guys, you know, you th talk about veteran players and what's most exciting about them is not just the minutes they've logged and the things they've accomplished and what they've proven, but they know how hard it is. That's the one thing that you can't give to rookies, right? Um, and so these vets, they know how hard it is. They've been doing an unbelievable job leaving this team. And kind of 1 through 17, you're right, we got guys that can play. And so it's going to be really exciting and, and really challenging to make it all work, but it's a great problem to have. Naturally, as a senior grad transfer, the comparison with Tijon Lucas and Brandon Averett is an easy one to yep. make. How are they different? Um, well, they're the same in the fact that they're incredibly beautiful human beings. I mean, they're, they're two of the best kids you're ever going to meet in your life. Um, Tijon, in, in his heart of hearts, so it was really interesting. I've talked to you guys about this, baby, but I'll say it again. So I, the first time I called Tijon Lucas, he, um, he picked up the phone, and I knew he was being recruited really heavily. He put up huge numbers at, at Milwaukee last year. It was 16 and 5 and 6. And, um, and so, you know, it's at his last year. I'm thinking he's probably trying to look to have the ball in his hands all the time, take a ton of shots. And so I said to him straight up, I'm like, T, listen, I think you're unbelievable. I'm such a huge fan. But if what you want out of this next year is to have all the shots and have the ball in your hand the whole time, this is probably not your place. Fully expecting that I was going to hear a click on the phone and just be done with it. And he kept talking to me. And they ended up coming here. And that just tells a lot about who he is and what he wants. Um, at his heart of hearts, like in his core, he is a playmaker. He wants to make plays for guys. He's super physical. He's got some length on defense. He's unbelievable finishing around the rim. And, man, he can just dime people up. It's a little bit of a vintage kind of T.J. Haas feel in terms of him getting downhill mm. and then, like, flinging it out all over the place to the three-point line. He's really special. He's got greater leadership, and he's got great joy. People see it at Midnight Madness tomorrow, the joy he has. Okay. It's yep. awesome. All right, let's talk the Seneca Knight angle. What type of impact do you expect him to make for BYU basketball now that he's been cleared? Yeah, Seneca is a he is a unique player in my tenure probably here at BYU. If I was gonna like point to somebody that he might feel like, like be in the same realm as, 
in some ways is a Kyle Collinsworth. It's a really, really big guard who you cannot take his ball from him. You can't take it. He's an unbelievable finisher at the rim. Uh, he's a proven big minute scorer. Uh, was a lead dog on San Jose State for two years. Uh, is a, just an incredible young man. He's got a couple little minor injury setbacks right now that he's working through, but uh, he's going to be a really important key for us. The fact that in key moments of the game, we could actually put him at 6'6 with a 6'8 wingspan, kind of running the point and trust his decision making is going to be super exciting for us. Just as exciting as running him at the four and thinking about mismatch opportunities. Interesting. Do you expect those minor injury setbacks to enable him to still start the season? Yeah, he, November he's, 9th? He's, yeah, there's nothing that's holding back. It's just been a few days here and a few days there. Gotcha. Um, the thing, this practice time is so valuable to kind of learn what we do and how we do it. And so he's he's super eager to kind of be in in every position as much as he can. But he's going to have a huge impact on the team this year. Have you had to tailor the scheme and the strategy of what you do to this personnel? Or do they plug into the scheme? Yes. <laughs> exactly. 100% correct. So it's a little bit of both. So we're always going to keep like our main foundational approaches, right? Uh, you, know, you know, over the last six years and two years here, we've proven that kind of our general offensive pillars of philosophy work. They're really good. We've been a top 20 offensive team the last two years here. So uh, I talk so much, I run out of breath. I love that. Actually, I love that feeling. Do you ever talk so much? Yes, as you yes, start yes. To, yes. We know yes. it well. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. last few words, it's fantastic. It's excitement. Okay. Uh, Fans start popping. But with this team, we're just so different. Year one was so different with, like, the most skilled roster you ever have. Year two was a young, super deep, less skilled, but super big, like, physical team. And this year's team is a little bit different in, 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 in makeup than the other two. So we're working hard to take advantage of all those pieces. It is BYU Basketball Media Day. We're talking with head coach Mark Pope on BYU Sports Nation. I can't believe I have to ask this question um, because it feels like he's at the top of his game. But how has Alex Barcelo improved oh. this offseason? Yeah, so he's actually improved in a couple remarkable ways. So he came back on a mission. He's got a very specific agenda what he wants to do. He wants to become one of the best defensive guards in the country. So if you came to practice, you would see him in every single drill. He's got such a huge chip on his shoulder trying to actually make plays on defense. Our new mantra, you guys are like this, Mo Better, Less Worse. Yes. I'm that, getting T-shirts. Yeah, I'm getting Mo Better, Less Worse t-shirts made. I'll get you guys hats. Next time I'll come, we'll deck you out. Mo Better, Less Worse. You trying right? to get a sponsorship? You heard it here first. No, this is BYU, man. This is vintage BYU Mo Better, Less Worse. So he's been working on his Less Worse numbers huge. And what that means is, like, he's actually trying to take away possessions as a defender from the offense. Wow. And he's trying to, you know, one of the only statistical categories where he hasn't been excellent has been in his, his spot-up defense, all the things that are involved in there. So he's defensively, he's just making a huge difference on every single possession right now. We're super excited about that. He's, he's, he's been so committed. And the second thing is his passing now is off the charts. So, um, you know, right hand, left hand, hook passes, reading the ball screen, lasers everywhere. You know, we did a little study on the Utah Jazz, the best passing team in the NBA last year. Uh, this summer with our guys. And what was really incredible about watching that great team was that not only are they making all the right passes, but the velocity of the pass and the on-time, on-target nature um, was actually buying guys like a tenth of a second to get off a shot or a little bit earlier on the closeout and making all the difference. So we spent the whole summer working on our decision-making and passing, and, and Alex has made huge strides there. So that's just two of the ways where he's Love really that. improved his Hey, game. Alex, I'm going to need you to shoot 60% from the three-point line, yeah. okay? Well, <laughs> Trevin Nell's probably like, yeah, just put it in my pocket, exactly. and I'll do what I did against Gonzaga. <laughs> that's right? exactly right. And yeah. the other thing Alex and Trevin have both been working on is increasing their range. So, they, you know, Alex is trying to take more shots and tougher shots, which we're really excited about, both those guys working on their range and it's fun man it's fun to watch these young men grow like seeing these guys grow yeah. and then letting them see themselves grow through their hard work is so inspiring and, and we're excited about it and you even overcame not being able to even practice in the annex as you got a new court and it's getting painted but you're, you're in there and you're good hey any cougar fans who practice in that back broken down gym in the old provo high school it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Many a Cougar has played in that, yes. right? The old Hoosiers gym is actually an upgrade. If you ever see the movie, that would be a huge upgrade from that gym. Um, let's finish with this. What, what's your reaction to some of the f flattering commentary about BYU at Big 12 Media Day yesterday? I, I, I didn't follow Big 12 Media Day. What did they say? Basically, uh, many of Everybody the coaches loves were BYU. talking about 
what a great ad BYU will be, the fan base, the following, you being a rising star in the game. Well, just think about this for a second, okay? Just think about this. You're taking off two top 25 teams, throwing them in that deal. You're taking Central Florida, which has got, what did I have, 150,000 students on campus. And they were in the tourney crazy. Two, two or three years ago. Yes, yep. going to be really good. Mm -hmm. And you're taking Cincinnati. What? With an unbelievable basketball tradition. And it sounds like maybe – I don't know what the details are, how they're working out, but there's a good chance we're going to have Texas and Oklahoma in that league for the first year or two. Right now, first two years, unless they leave early. Come on! You talk yeah. about the best basket. That's the best basketball in the world. Like, put us, you know, we got the Eastern Division and the and the Western Conference in the NBA. Just get us be the South. <laughs> let us be the South. Come on. It's better than the Euro League. <laughs> All right, I'm getting a little carried away with myself, but yes, it's it's super exciting. This this transition in the league is going to be yet yeah, there. We're so it's it's so fun to be out on the horizon, but we have to win here in the WCC before we go. It, you feel it's a reality that you can take down number one, and you tasted it in Vegas where you guys were up in the Close. second half. Yeah, yeah. Minus a, like I've said, minus a better coach, we win that game, right? And so, <laughs> so this is the deal. It's like, listen, they're the best team in the country, and we're a top twenty-five team in the country the last two years, and we got to make up the ground. We just have to make up the ground. We have to make up the ground. We're not fortunate to be in the ACC or the Big East or the SEC or the Big 12 right now that has the second best team in the country. We're in the WCC that has the best team in the country. So our job right now is to find a way to beat those guys. And listen, San Francisco and St. Mary's and Santa Clara and all the other teams in this league give us everything we can handle. LMU. So it's LMU. So it's on. Like It's just exciting to talk hoops, man. I know. It I know exciting. it. exciting. Yes, I'm not ready for this football season to be over. This football season is fire. It's fun. Like, how yes. fun has this yes. been? We're about to go cause some mayhem at Washington State tomorrow. I can't wait. But it is fun. To, it is fun to be getting close. Hey, thank you for the gifts, Mark, uh, for yeah, your injection of energy into Studio B, as always. And it's we so do fun have to talk with you. Okay, suits or polos. So far, it's uh, polo. We didn't do the three quarters zip. We just yep. Put it fine, there. Fair enough. Polo sixty-seven percent. It's early. Polo sixty-seven. It's early. It's early. There are only okay, oh, clearly you a suit. All right, I'm gonna have to get on my. I'm gonna have to get on my soapbox and start preaching to see where we can go. <laughs> Six, how, many, how many? How many total yeah. votes? Tell me how many. Only, total only votes. like fifty. Uh, only it's hand. early. All right, all it's you, early. all you suit people, could you please jump on the pole and help me out? <laughs> help a brother out, please. <laughs> I will. I will be one of those to help. <laughs>